G'day guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our beautiful friends at Budgie Smuggler. There is such an exciting competition going on at the moment. You can enter now to win a custom pair of smugglers for your team's 2022 season of pursuit to the Holy Grail, and you'll be looking the part as well. You get a custom pair of smugglers for your team. Whatever you want on them, matching it all, setting the tone, and looking good, feeling good, playing good in whatever sport that is, head to the link in the show notes to enter this competition, and your team's pretty much guaranteed to win the flag. Let's go. Chloe, Ali, Lily, welcome to the Your Friends Podcast, my friends. It's an honor, pleasure, privilege to have you in the studio. How many times Thank you, you practice do? that? Oh, I practice that, that every morning. Really well. in, <laughs> Chloe, practice, Chloe, Ali, Lily, Chloe, yeah, Lily. I, I practice that every morning and it's been a dream of mine to have you three in here. So as you You're know, it's, oh, it's been there. So. Are you dreaming about me? Yes. Because yes. I dream about you. Oh, wow. <laughs> have you actually? Maybe. Oh, wow. okay. Fantastic. That's su- super weird. It's good um, to be here, though. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> it is good to be here. Hey, you're moving up in the world. You're a podcaster these mm, days. It's dominating the podcast I am. game. Yeah, it's been good. Bonnie yeah. and I have been doing a podcast with the club, Off the Leash. Yeah. little plug there mm-hmm. for it, which has yeah. been really good. We've had some great guests. We've got Debbie Lee on it. I would highly recommend listening to that one. She's a perler of a storyteller. So, Give us a quick rundown on that one. Like, Who is Debbie Lee? What does she do? What's her story? Uh, general manager of women's footy at the Western Bulldogs, but absolute trailblazer yep. in women's footy in general. Um, you know, she was a big part of starting up the AFLW. Um, she was at Melbourne originally and then found her light Lil and came to the <laughs> came to the dogs. Um, but the she's been a gr- <laughs> but she's been a great asset to to women's footy in general. She's played over three hundred games, but she's a, a a great manager of footy and and stuff like that. She's so. the first female to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. All right, all right, let's definitely she's get to that we'll have the link in the show notes if you're listening to that because we always respect our fellow podcasters because you know the hustle we know the grind we can't all work for the big networks we can't all work for <laughs> fox or seven or ten and you know there's some big dogs in the room today that work with those big commercial bees chloe are you I enjoying about Lil. lil's was seven. Oh no i'm not I haven't done oh, anything open. this year. Yeah. Ellie is more of seven than I'm seven. No, I've been, I've jumped on the Fox oh, bandwagon. Oh, okay, so let's go back to I was having a, apparently now we're all commercial beasts yeah. besides me. Um, okay, it's embarrassing. So let's move on to that. Hey, guys, before we get into it, something that I find, um, you know, I really love knowing and, and in all seriousness is really admirable with what's, um, you know, the whole AFL women's competition is how hard do you girls have to work to play footy but also outside of footy, what you're up to at the moment. I'm always super interested in stories and how everyone balances this because I know how hard it is and how hard probably probably maybe badly to say this, but how much maybe some of the men take this for granted, how you know they think they're busy, but I know that I wasn't very busy when I was going to Bondi Beach on the, on the day off. Um, talk us through quickly what you're up to at the moment and how you're sort of balancing that with, with AFOW. Uh, well, me, I've just come into a full-time job with Fox Sports News, so... Uh, probably one of the lucky ones where the workplace understand it and obviously it's a sporting yep. uh, environment. So they kind of get that I want to be a great athlete, um, but it's kind of hard. We want to be great athletes, but we don't really have the resources around us to allow us to really break through and be elite, um, especially sometimes you can carry injuries throughout. So um, I've been working full time and then training late at night, uh, playing on the weekend. So yeah, Bondi's never really been on the cards for me. <laughs> um, yeah, struggled to find a bit of me time throughout the season and um, I think we get to the end of it and we're all pretty just exhausted and ready to get a one-way flight um, on a holiday. So for me personally, uh, it's been uh, pretty difficult this year, especially coming across an injury, um, just trying to manage that but also financially support myself. Mm. And then we talk about having a healthy balance and, yeah, that really goes off for me in the FRW season but it's just – don't really know any other way to be for sure uh for me i'm a learning and development manager at the pancake parlor lovely um it's i actually really love my job and love being able to work outside of playing footy um my work is incredibly supportive um a big shout out to our ceo mandy and um my manager kyla who they're just so supportive um for me and and my football um which i couldn't be any more thankful for um but yeah i guess the balance of it all is is hard i mean for us we're playing midweek games up in the gold coast and it's just like trying to manage that whilst trying to work is it is a real real battle but I'm really fortunate again similar to Chloe that um you know I've I've got a supportive work environment and and I can find that balance pretty all right um at the moment for me 
Yeah, I work at Infolio Property Advisors, so I'm a buyer's advocate. So mm. in the real estate game, didn't didn't want to quite be a real estate agent. So I thought I'd be the middleman <laughs> and the nice guy yeah. in, in real estate. Nice. And um, yeah, I absolutely love it. But it is tricky sort of being a job where you're looking after clients and clients sort of are expecting you to be there and answer your call, call and, and do this and do that is a bit tricky when you're like, oh, well, sorry, I'm at footy training <laughs> or um, this weekend I'm in WA, so I can't come to this auction or this, that and the other. So it's, um, yeah, it's all a balance. But, again, a really supportive um, boss in, in Lauren at the, in Folio and Joe Watson's also a director there, so yeah. he obviously gets the footy side of things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a balance and it's a juggle and it, I, I love it too. I love having sort of passions outside of footy to have that, I guess, balance in in what you're talking about and what you're developing your skill set in but sort of the work-life balance definitely does go out the window as Chloe mm. mentioned um will we be seeing you on lords of real estate instagram page anytime soon oh that i could uh, <laughs> i could amp up the content yeah. on the, <laughs> on the new instagram account really <laughs> just some real fraser lack yeah motivation just I mean, like i've met the man yeah have you really? yeah, yeah I've met him. Oh, i'm a massive fan yeah he's, he's yeah. a good man um yeah. He's um he's pretty stylish. Yeah, he is. Like he's got no, some. He's got a bit of swag about him. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But um, I would like to be like one of my goals is to avoid being on that page. Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and that's yeah. that's fair enough. Pretty too. valid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just on that as well, I don't I don't want to brush over. It's again, I have massive respect for that. And in a way, what I always talk about on the show, as I know you're all massive fans, you would definitely um listen to every episode, is how beneficial it actually was for me to do a bit of work outside of it. And it's like in a way. It's actually interesting to know now, like, um, as much as we need to get the AFLW to um, equal pay and, like, make it more of a legitimised system and have, like, better contracts and stuff, do you still see benefit in doing something outside of the club mentally? Like, do you actually find good escape from it? Because I know that when I was playing, I really struggled playing footy full-time. I think it's a beneficial, particularly for your mental health, I yeah. think, to have that balance outside of footy. I know a couple of players that, you know, even in AFLW at the moment that are just playing footy and have the opportunity to just play footy, you know, whether they're studying or, you know, they're, they're well supported at home. So they're able to do that. And they're just so consumed by it. Like mm. it's just footy, footy, footy all day long. And they don't have that outlet as such. Whereas I find, I don't know about you guys, but I have that outlet where I can go to work and I can really dive into that. And I can take my mind away from footy for a little bit and refresh every time I step in the doors when I go to, to training or at a game or something like that. So I think for me mentally, it's it's been the best thing that I've done. And I think also when you look at sort of the back end of your career as well, I think it's important to have a skill set away from football so that you can sort of fall back on. So, you know, for me being able to to work at the Pancake Parlour and, and be a learning and development manager there, it's, it's giving me opportunities outside of football when it comes to the end of my footballing career. Whereas I think I've noticed with a lot of, the male players is that they get towards the end of their career and it's like, well, what do I do? I've, I've known footy my entire life mm-hmm. and there's only so many media jobs or coaching jobs or jobs, you know, yep. um, you know, within football clubs that these players can get. So if you can have skill sets outside of playing footy, I think it's important. Yeah. You also just don't know when your career is going to finish exactly. either. Um, I think well, all of us have seen the ACLs and their 12 month thing and, you know, it's not ever a uh, sure thing that you come back from an injury and at the same player that you are and your body not, might not even respond. So if you've got nothing to fall back on, I just think it's kind of a waste and it's a bit of a shame on you not to have something like a backup yeah. plan. Because um, life never kind of really goes to plan. So, and, and I think the thing is, like, we've been able to see that sort of trend in the men's game. Like, you, yeah. you always say that, you know, you would have loved to do something. And we've seen that from the men's. The men's always come back, feedback to the AFL saying... And the PA being like, well, we actually want time to be able to do other things. So why would we as AFLW, mm-hmm. as a league and as players, want to then go, oh, well, let's just be full-time. We'll have no other time to do anything. Yeah. And then be in the exact same yeah, exactly. spot in 15 years where the AFL I'm men's sure. are. And then go, oh, can we actually have some time to do other things? It's <laughs> yeah. like, oh, well, we had this. <laughs> why, don't we, like, why don't we get on the front foot? It's sort of fi- literally finding, your exact point, finding a balance of the best of both worlds. Mm. Finding it where you're playing at a professional level and being rewarded for that financially. And then also keeping the good habits you've already got in setting yourself up. Because the AFLW, as much as those need to equal out, you're actually 
the trailblazers in transitioning before it's even happened because it, the AFL men's, as you said, need to learn a lot more about mm. that side of things. But I do think, though, if we want to be working full-time, we can't have the best of both worlds. Like, something's kind of got to give. Yeah. Mm. Like, we can't be working full-time and playing full-time. So, yes. as much as we want skill sets outside of it, I don't think it can be, hey, we want this and we want this and we're, you know, trying to direct and say, give us full-time pay, but we're also going to go do this and – not fully invest in being a full-time athlete. So 100%. I think and we have to sacrifice a little bit. I love that. And it's a great point. It's a bit of a slam dunk on my face. But what, <laughs> I'm, what I mean with that is what I'm picking out, what you're putting down with that is, and I think about this a lot, is like for me when I was um, playing and, you know, like I wasn't Dustin Martin, but I don't see him going out and doing one day a week work experience. You know what I mean? Like he's, a, <laughs> like he's good at what he does because he has full time and he puts 100% of his effort into his game. Good so, um, yeah, we probably spent 45 minutes on that discussion that wasn't um, planned, but I think we, we solved some problems. I think it was worthwhile. We solved <laughs> yeah, some problems. Um, <laughs> breakout plays this year, girls. Give me one player from another team Ooh. that would you, you would grab onto your own teams. And I'm, I'm going to go one step further saying the player will be like something that you need at the moment to go into the final series. I'll take Kirstie Lane from you guys. Yeah, she's good. She brings the left good. foot into the midfield, which is kind of like we've all got we've got right footers. Mm. So you bring a lefty in, wouldn't mind that. And she's just, just mm. done stop. Like, You're not having her. Yeah. <laughs> just done stop. So Lammy, if you're listening. Oh, I don't know. Will, do you have someone in mind? I know this could be a bit of a cop-out answer. We've got a lot of midfielders and we've been just sort of playing them all out of position so they can all play because mm. they're sort of our best players. But I'd potentially take... Eb Marinoff or maybe Hatchard actually. Ooh, yeah, one, so one. Adelaide down a really good <laughs> mid. And two, so we can add a bit of size into our midfield because I'd like to think we're playing Adelaide at some point mm. in the next couple of weeks. Oh, I like Hatchard as, a, as one. I'd say maybe like Emily Bates, someone oh, yeah. like us. We've got a couple of balls around the, our midfield group and that extra outside runner I think would be handy. And gee, she's, she's been good this year, Batesy. Love it. Okay. She is really good, isn't she? She's a star. Yeah. She's really good. I like her. Um, I thought you'd give, give my, um, besides you three, my favourite players oh, as well. Us. Um, I love Georgia G. Mm. Yeah. She's same. so quick and like just, Nimble. I like to think she's sort yeah. of like a really good version of what I used to play like. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like sort of what I Don't was. offend the woman. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be a compliment to her, by the way. Like some bombing from outside 50. No, I went there on the weekend that game and I was just like, fuck it. She's unbelievable. Mm. Like, she played a rip of that game. Yeah. She was good. Really she was really good. good. She's so crafty. Yeah. She's yeah. got a quick one touch. So when she gets a footy, like no matter how she has it in her hand, she just knows where to yeah. kick it. Mm. Which yeah. Which is incredible. And that's hard to teach. Well, I don't think you can teach No, nah, you can't teach that. Um, you know, no. I'd, have you I'd, got it? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah I've had it as well. So, um, yeah, it's something we've got in common. It's just fantastic. That's why I like it. Um, girls, one thing I love talking about as well is like mindset, getting better, always trying to learn new things in this space and probably something that I, you know, didn't get to till later after footy. Talk us through what you do at your clubs or personally. Is there anything that like you go and you study or is it like mindfulness or uh, visualisation that your clubs do or you do personally? Is any, is that... That happen? Yeah, so we've got a club psych, yep. uh, Beck Black is her name, and she's re- this year I've probably worked with her more than in previous years. Sorry, she's new to the club this year, but yep. uh, more than is our she previous Melbourne psych. like across teams? Or is she just no, she's, she's just with us. Yeah, um, her other um, side hustle or main job really is really interesting. It's actually about um, birthing, so it's like which she can draw lots of correlation between a woman having birth to footy because it's like stressful in the moment like what I've sort of got out of working with her this year is um like self-affirmations as well just sort yeah. of that self-belief you, you know just you telling myself power, I'm a boss do you do power stances I seriously do, used to do this no like, I don't do power stances okay. or just sort of Neither. in my head um yeah. talk us through what that is though like for people that wouldn't know what yeah so is. just sort of I guess self-talk um usually I just do it like if I'm driving in the car just or if I'm just thinking about it and just sort of telling myself, like, I can do it and I'm good enough to do it. Um, and it's usually, like, pretty – like, it's always to do with, like, game and skill set and things like that. Um, so coming into, like, a big game, it's kind of like, yeah, like, we're good enough to win, we're going to win, that kind of stuff. Sometimes in, like, run-throughs. Yeah. Like, pre-training, I'm, like, telling everyone that I'm going to win the race, yep. mm. even though I'm definitely not the fastest. <laughs> but I always go a little bit quicker. But um, be honest as well, with that – when you're saying I'm good enough, is that actually what you're saying? Or are you saying something a little bit more aggressive in your head? Like, are you saying I'm the fucking best? 
Um, or are you saying it sort I'm of good it probably depends, like yeah. in what sort of state I'm in. Yeah. Um, no, it's usually like I am good enough. I'm a very good player. Yeah. I am very quick on my feet. Yeah. Like I'm very strong in the contest. Like stuff like that, and that sort of then feeds into, I guess, a bit of visualization that if I sort of talk step by step with what the actual like I'm a midfielder, so it's like ground balls into quick hands into an inside 50 mm. kicks. And if you sort of, you know, talk about each sort of step and telling yourself that you're good enough, it sort of paints a picture, which then you can kind of see yourself doing on game day. Um, so that's kind of one thing that I've, yeah, really taken from her. And then, as we sort of mentioned before, I guess that work-life ba- balance can get really skewed. And um, I'm not someone that sort of talks openly about how I'm feeling. It's sort of... <laughs> gets to a point where I just sort of crumble and, and it all gets a bit much and I sort of combust a little bit. So just sort of identifying when, you know, work's being a bit too much or, or footy's getting really late and, you know, you're not sleeping properly or you're not doing this and you're not doing that. So just sort of working on with her just on a more sort of individualised base. Unreal. To, um, yeah, just to make sure that, like, I'm a 24-year-old girl that needs to be having fun and, and living life as well as, you know, trying to create a career but also just be a really good footballer and, and enjoy that sort of moment that I've got oh, at the moment. Love that. Mm. That's awesome. Really cool. I am big in that space. I yep. think um, it's probably – we don't see it. Like, you can't really see your brain and be like, oh, how are you going today? Like, um, it's something that we kind of have to look after. And I a big one in that, yeah, body reflects how you're feeling. Um, so I see – a psychologist fort once a fortnight. Um, even if I feel like I don't know what I want to go in there with, you just get talking and then um, coming up with strategies. And a lot of it is around footy, um, obviously because the AFRW season is quite intense. Um, and this year's been, I think, pretty exhausting for a lot of players. So um, I see her and just come up with some things. I'm a big one to talk um, to myself and just yep. trying to. Like Lil said, change it from a negative talking to a positive. Um, a lot of things that, are, well, a lot a line that I say is I'm okay. Um, especially this year, I've had a bit of an injury um, that's kind of got me down sometimes. So a little bit feeling a little bit guilty for being out on the park when I know that I'm not fully fit. So I'm like, fuck, oh, I should probably, you know, someone else should probably come in. But you know, they want me there, so it's just like I'm okay. Um, but I think, yeah, looking after your mind is is massive, and it um, reflects your body. Love that. I, uh, I I see psych as well once every three weeks. And to get to your point too, like when you say you don't really think you need it and you're like, fuck, I probably don't need it this week. Like I'm actually flying. You end up going and I, in there. and Yeah, <laughs> end up going in there. I'm like, I'm not okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not okay. But I always go in like before, like a day before, I'm always like, fuck, I'm going to cancel this because I'm just i too busy. Do I don't need it. I'm like, yep. I don't need it. Saw it three weeks ago. Like I'm good. Good to go. Then I'm like, oh, no, I better go. You go and then you're just like, oh, fuck, I needed that. Like that was good. Yeah, you always got like a little bit of pep in your step. Yeah, after. you always yeah, I'm going to go change the world mm. and freaking sponsor yeah. for children now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good about that. Yeah, exact same thought. Um, so, yeah, um, that was just thinking out loud. Um, yourself? Yeah, I, I think for me, I've, I've started seeing a psych as well, which is yep. something I never thought I'd do. But In club land or out? Have you out, gone out outside? of club land. Yeah, it's yeah, um, good. I did do a lot of resilient stuff with, our, with one of our our club psych um with shenny he he has a book on like wrestling with resilience so i've done some stuff um based off his book and and worked with him a little bit um in that space but i think for me also i i try and practice like savoring as a technique to like keep me grounded and savoring the moment is that that, yeah yeah yeah. so like trying to like take in a deep breath and acknowledge where i am and be like like smiling while I'm doing it yeah, and, cool. and just, you know, trying to be as present as possible. Um, but I've also started listening to like a heap of – and reading like self-help books and um, podcasts and things like that. I've started listening um, to a bit of Emma Murray. Oh, she's, she's the best. incredible. Um, so, yeah, things like that are, have definitely been helpful for mm-hmm. me. Um, I think she's got a new podcast called The Long Haul. I was listening to the other day. Very, Josh Bruce actually on it too. Yeah, 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 yep, yeah. Yep. Really interesting. He's been plugging it at training. Um, yeah, I'm sure he has. <laughs> the how hard is this? Is just a weird dog, but how hard is staying present? I'm like so fucking mm. bad at it, and yeah. it's something that I'm like trying to get better at. I'm really aware of it now, and I have like triggers to come. But I'm always like in a conversation, but thinking about like six other things. And you know, Sam, um, my good friend over there, who. He can like, he knows when I'm not listening to him, but I'm like looking at him, but my eyes are like somewhere else. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? 
it's that's something that I'm really trying to get better at as well. So that's savoring the moment. Yeah. Deep so breath, being yeah, where you and are. it could be even like just wherever you are, like just take a photo of where you are, so you just yeah, right. remember that you're in that moment. Feet and on try the ground. And enjoy it. Yeah. Mm. Which is I've I've started doing that in COVID because like obviously throughout COVID, throughout that first lockdown, it was it was stressful and you were everywhere and anxiety was real. And so just doing moment, doing things like that kept you in the moment and kept you being like, well, this is where I'm meant to be right now. This is exactly what I'm meant to be doing. Like it. But good. were you were you meant to be just locked in your house? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I mean, trying to set the positives. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, very good. According to Dan, you were yes. you were meant to be yeah. there. Yes. Yes. I've literally forgotten about that whole period. It's weird yeah. that that was like even was a thing a while ago. That. I know. I'm fully blanked out. Yeah, yeah. like and it's been like three really. years. Well, I think that the what's happening in the world with the floods and the wars at the moment is actually yeah, showing us like real problems and we're just like fuck that was really weird compared to everything that's serious in the world at the moment um aflw season we're talking a little bit off mic before going into this year we're saying it's probably been the best season yet as it has everything's like really improving where do you want to see things get to in the next you know like one to two to three years what for you would be like that's what i want that's what we really need is it pushing for obviously full-time uh afl athletes and then what else is there else that's sort of bubbling around or I think one word that's popped up between three of us is balance. Balance, yeah. Um, so getting that right, I think, rip the Band-Aid off and make us full-time. They rip the Band-Aid off with expansion, so why not just rip it off with full-time? But then I'm like, that's so easy for me to say because I'm probably in a job where I can, you know, just be like, yep, I'm going to go full-time now. Yeah. Where, Lil, you've probably established yourself. You're in a really high up role with, like, the Pancake Parlour, so that's, like, massive decision mm. for some players to be like, yeah. ooh, I've really established myself in my career. I've studied this. I've paid, like, I've got uni debt all for this and now I'm going to go try be an athlete and, you know, I could have be an athlete for one year, two years and then, oh, crap, I've given up my job now. I've got to come back to it. So, yeah, right, yeah. I don't know. I think my – probably one I'll talk on is the balance. I think, um, yeah, looking for being able to financially support ourselves. So, whether that's yep. full-time, yep. part-time, just being able to financially support ourselves and those with families and – Etc. I think for me, what I'd like to see is twelve months contracts, yep. um, or like being able to go into the club for twelve months of the year. And obviously, like the hours would really vary when you're in your off season and pre season and in season. I think you'd have to break it up into brackets for so, there. So, what's the what's the go with that at the moment? Is that not a is that like what's the contract no. at the moment? How does that work? So it's once like the season's six done, six months you, almost. Six really? Months. Yeah. So you're not actually led back in the. I didn't know that. Well, like, you're allowed in. in. Yeah. You, you're technically, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but like you're not being compensated for anything yeah. you're doing. Okay, gotcha. On, yeah. Like any yeah. other time of the year, so a there's no contract real contract to like pay for twelve months yeah, that you yeah. can then for yeah. the work that you're already yes. doing. Tax time yeah. bloody sucks. And freaking trying to get like a home loan mm. and be yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this for six months I'm rich, and then for the other six months I'm actually that's living off the six month pay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a big thing for me. And then I think extending games. I think if you add more games, I think it would take less stress off players because it's the having to back it up each week. It's For me, it's like, oh, God, my, my body is, is wrecked. But it's like I just – I've got to keep playing. I've got to keep playing because it's only a short amount of games that you're playing. Whereas if you extend the season out, you can be like, I can actually afford to – to rest and, yeah. and coaches can afford to rest their players throughout the season to prepare them best moving mm. forward for the longevity of it. Um, whereas at the moment, everyone's playing and they're like, oh, I'm cooked, I'm yeah. cooked, I'm cooked. And if you got a niggle, you miss two weeks and that's like yeah. the fifth and yeah. You don't yeah. really have time for like a form slump, which I, no. that, no. you know, if you're not playing at your best, it's you don't have much time to work back into yeah. the game to, yeah. to really get the season going as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's become better. Like, I remember in the first couple of years, like, oh. you'd lose a game and everyone would be in tears because it'd mm. be like, well, That's, there's yeah. our chance, like, of finals. Yeah. It's Completely. like, you, we've lost a game, so we're done now. Yeah. Mm. Like, yeah. now we've got 10 games. But even, like, with a longer season, like, you probably add a buy in. Like, we don't have a buy. Mm. So that also means that, you know, you're sort of going from work to training to a game on the weekend and just on repeat. Like, there's no real time just to put your feet up and, no. you know, hang out a little bit. So. Yeah. That, um, yeah, I'm probably with you, length of the season. And that would probably also mean that our contracts obviously become longer. But the I think with the contract thing too, if you've got coaches who are also being paid for the off-season, then you can actually just mm. go to footy training and train point. in the off-season and still continue yeah. to get better yeah. rather than 
mm. doing laps of the local park and asking <laughs> dad to, you know, roll you a couple of ground balls. <laughs> like, you know, like where, like where do we actually get better if you're not, yeah, exactly. if you don't have the resources around you for the point. time of the year where you're not actually, where mm. you're not playing and you can, mm. you know, yeah. continue so, to invest in yeah. yourself and your skills. And this is why it's so interesting and so vital that we have these discussions because i, I think edu- educating not that you want to know let people know what's actually going on but a lot, i don't think a lot of people would know that they'd see what happens and see how you know that the the rise of aflw and how like big it is and how respected it is now but there's so many things other than that in the off season that people are like fuck i didn't realize that mm-hmm. you had to go and have a roll grambles with your dad in the off season that you know to try and be a com- yeah. an elite athlete that's just not something that you'd <laughs> think an elite athlete would be doing no and definitely not and it's yeah, I think pay is one thing because we are doing lots of hours that it's not like, and you would know, like you can't just rock up to day one of preseason not doing anything from your last no. game of the year prior to that. And obviously we're, we're used all to, athletes. Like, and, <laughs> <laughs> and we have like a, we all love actually exercising and keeping yeah. fit. And yeah. We have a will and want to do that. But if there's sort of some structure between that sort of mm. other six month period when we're not yeah. contracted to do anything and we're sort of, given some opportunity to do so, I think that's where some real growth will come. Uh, hopefully you guys agree. Like what's happened has been incredible, like the growth and it's been mm. awesome, but there is just those still little things that need yeah. to keep going. And it's not seen as like, I think it's not being ungrateful for what's already happened. It's just going, well, it still needs to be better. Yep. Yeah, mm. completely. Cool. Glad we can agree on that. <laughs> um, hey, so we know what we need to get better at, but what um, has been one of the most like, not surprising, but something you've seen as a rise that you've been like, fuck, we're on the right track here with with the season we're on the right track with afl w has it been the you know junior level participation has it been the um crowd attendance the skill level going up what's been something that you've been like fuck this is we're on i think it's a i'm, I'm really liking that there's proper pathways now coming through the ranks so the under 18s that are coming through the system um are footballers they're, they're genuine footballers whereas you know sort of the initial couple of years of AFLW, it was footballers and athletes and mm. there was only a handful that had kind of come through the system. We were probably some of the fortunate ones um, where we got to play youth girls footy together and, and, you know, be able to come through that pathway. But even then it wasn't as good as sort of what it is now. So the likes of like Charlie Rowbottom coming through, she's a, a genuine good footballer. Um, so I think it's the competition's in a, in a healthy place because of, those players coming mm. through the system, to be honest. Also as well, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Charlie Rowbottom, she's not from Gold Coast, is she? So it's, no. is that one of the first draft picks that's been drafted into state? Because normally aren't the drafts state? So you nominate. So, yeah, you nominate, so you nominate you, if you want to Yeah, leave. so when you put your hat in the ring and you want to get nominated, yeah. you pick a state that you want to be drafted to. So if I am in live in Melbourne, then I'd pick the Victorian draft. Right. But if, for example, From Gold WA Coast called yeah, me yeah. then they would, and they said, hey, can you nominate for Queensland draft, then Queensland or Brisbane can pick you up. Is that one of the one of the first ones that's happened with a high round pick though? Like to, I think, yeah. To go yeah. yeah. So. I, I love that Gold Coast did that because yeah. they would have gone, well, you know, Charlie Rowbottom, I'm not sure she would have gone probably top 10 in Melbourne pick, but she probably wasn't in the conversation for a one or two sort of yeah, pick right. in Melbourne. I'm not sure completely, but I think that's sort of – the story but then for them to go well if we can lure up one of the best sort of victorian talent because there is sort of a lot of melbourne talent yeah compared to a lot of the other states hence why we've got eight teams yep. based here but for them to go oh yeah we'll give you uni degree we'll give you housing mm, we'll give you huge. a job like so amazing for them to invest in you know someone else who's Completely. you know they've got to throw a bit of coin and a bit of resources at her to, to get her up there but i guess that's how a team like gold coast that's get cool. better and um, grow their list mm. I think that's so with expansion so there's four more teams coming in I think the the state-based draft thing's got to change yeah because for example in Sydney the Giants they're going okay but they've got you know to then compete within another Sydney Swans team and share that talent around like it's just going to be hard to uh, see how they compete yeah. against you know some other teams that are really established I guess oh, well, Adelaide should be fine because there's enough sort of SA talent. But if you can nominate in multiple states because you've got family in somewhere or if you've got job opportunity, you've got uni opportunity in another state, if you can nominate in multiple different locations, I think that's where sort of expansion will, will yeah. benefit. Yeah. Um, because it is going to be really hard to see like where does how does Sydney Swans field a team? Well, even... To, to on the fact of um, the, the we keep coming back to is being, you know, full-time pay and 12 months contract is 
I know how hard it is to live in Sydney when you are getting paid full time, let alone yeah. when you have to go up there from Melbourne, relocate, try and find a job. Like, you know, Alicia Eva has been on the show before and she's an incredible coach and has a time with the Giants, AFL men's and AFL women's. But I know how hard it is for uh, the Giants team to be doing that because, like, the, the cost of living in Sydney is genuinely, like, <laughs> rattling. Like yeah. It's, it's it's crazy, so. And then as Chloe mentioned, it's only for six months that yeah, you're then being months. paid. Yeah, six you got to go home. And, and then, yeah, do you go home or do yeah. you stay there and mm. get another job for another six months? Like, but if you can yeah. just sort of, you know, pick and choose a little bit and you can go live at your auntie's place in Sydney for six months of the year and then that's perfect mm. and you're happy to do that. But otherwise I just feel like mm. expansion teams will really sort of suffer. Yep. Uh, back to like the, you know, what's changed in the AFL. I think the... A big thing is perception. Um, we're no longer, you know, female footballers. We're just athletes. And yeah. that's the term that's just been thrown around. And um, I think it's like, um, you know, obviously my field, we look at a few numbers and 90% of people's attitudes have changed towards women's sport in, in a whole sense um, with cricket, with the soccer, with um, just, you know, female athletes, uh, the perceptions change and we're getting a lot more media coverage. We're having more um, opportunities to get out and speak and um, we're being covered more and the more eyes that are looking at you and, the, you know, the more people that can see you, the more people that want to be like you. So yeah. um, a big thing over across the years is how how much we've grown off field. Um, you mentioned on field, but I think the off field growth has been yeah. incredible and the perception of us as athletes is really changed and um yes we'll have critics but i think critics are great like criticize us all you want because that's that that means we're getting better and we're we're growing and you actually care enough to actually have a yeah you know an opinion <laughs> on us so like that comment on yeah, it so yeah so like that's awesome like, <laughs> like you don't have to you're actually it. watching <laughs> us mate yeah. so you're actually benefiting us um yeah but like 90 percent of, of people's attitude towards women's sports change which mm. is like it's huge if you're kicking at 90 percent on the field as a kicking efficiency you Probably going to get bogged, so <laughs> yeah, you're unless right. it's a one kick out of the back line. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, girls, thank you. Been an incredible day, but I cannot let you go without just giving me some um, TV recommendations because I'm finished on my series at the moment. Oh. I don't have anything <laughs> to sort of go to, so it'd be good to just give us maybe a top one or two movie or series or okay. podcast even, if you want. I just finished um, Inventing Anna. Ooh. My partner loved that show. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. Loved it. Can I say, mm -hmm. I watched the first episode. Is it like a little bit of a low budgety type series? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, a bit like I sort of, I get what you mean. And I watched on the plane, and a lot of the other girls were watching on the plane coming back from WA over the weekend. And people just, they were getting really frustrated with her voice. Yeah. And right. I think that was like a bit of a turn off. Is for this everyone. Ruth from Ozark's voice? Yeah. Yeah, because I love no, her. No, but she's got an accent. Different ac yeah, okay. So it's like more of a Russian or okay. German accent. I'm going to have to try um, that, yeah. And but that, that to, to give really context good. on the show, what's it about? It's about a scam artist? Yeah, it's about no. a scam. Yeah, so she's a con artist. Um, she sort of effectively just steals heaps of money from, from all her friends and can tries I? to paint out this picture that she's got this money from the family, but the money doesn't actually exist. So then she gets yeah. these bank loans for millions and millions of dollars. It's a true story. Um, she's Black currently in jail. Black out, yeah. mate. Yeah. 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 Wow. Did you watch the Tinder Swindler? <laughs> yeah, like that. It's sort of similar to the Tinder Swindler, yeah. but this is uh, like fiction and like a 10-part yeah. series. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, really it's, it, I love these. There's a podcast called um, Unravel Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, yeah. Mm. And it's not... That's actually a movie. It's called something else. I'll put in the show notes. Um, <laughs> but I was going to say. You know I was going to ask you if it was the same I always say I'll put in the show notes. The show notes never get updated. So <laughs> I will this episode. But there was a podcast about it as well about these like scam. I don't know how they do it. It's pretty hectic oh, how they no. live their life. It just gives yeah. me anxiety thinking about all the lies <laughs> you have to have. Al? Uh, to be honest, I'm not a big series watcher or anything <laughs> like that i i tend to always revert back to like watching gossip girl over and over again <laughs> good series it's, it's a great series isn't there a new one recently yeah like, but it's not that. as great though yeah. the no, i haven't watched it yeah okay. a couple yeah. of girls don't have just time. said no nah, don't, don't it's not the it's not the same it's, it's not, not the old your chuck and blair don't listen to the You're girls done. Live your own yeah. Life. you watch yeah. it yeah but okay. I mean, if I'm to recommend anything, it's um, I watch Wine Country on the the way home. I haven't, I don't know if you've seen that movie seen that before, but it's no. it's a it's a good comedy. It's um, I like that. What's it on? It's a 
bunch of black women just going to no, wine, wine what, country. What, um, what, what streaming platform? No, I didn't mind that. I didn't mind. I like both answers to be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. streaming yeah. platform. Streaming service. Where can we watch it? Where oh, can we watch oh, it? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, anyway. Well, let me tell you about the movie, though. Yeah. Um, I want both. Uh, I, I think it's on uh, Netflix. Yeah, Netty. Okay. Um, but yeah, a bunch of women go to <laughs> wine country and drink wine for a 50th birthday celebration. But anyway, <laughs> much <laughs> by me. That sounds like the weird thing. No, no, I've, I've got a good podcast recommendation. Okay, yeah. Off, off the, the leash. leash. Yeah, we've already had that twice today. <laughs> show notes, show notes. Um, Disney Plus is, there's a doco about the rescue um, with the Thailand so soccer boys. So yep. you obviously haven't heard... Dylan friends this No, this year, is why you? I listen to it, Dill. Sorry, I know this is Chloe's yeah. bit. Handball, <laughs> handball, 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 I, had handball. I had Richard on the show. Yeah, I Richard, listened to the- The one, oh, the, the, the anethetus. Um, oh, yeah. I listened to that I episode. I didn't know that. Didn't know that, yeah. I listened to that episode. Because yeah. I actually do listen to that yeah. every show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hence why I was so yeah. excited in the group <laughs> chat. <laughs> you were very excited. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited the one that named the group. Friends and Dill. Yeah, friends and Dill. Did you like that? This is not a one-off, guys. This is going to happen. Um- you like so that? I watched, yeah. I was listened to your podcast, and then I was like, "Oh, I need to watch that documentary. He is incredible." Yeah, yeah. Um, Richard Harris. So Richard Harris, the one that the Australian that flew over. Mm. I was just giving you an opportunity to to talk about to plug it. it. So and that's the sort of assist that you like to correct. give. Correct. Thank you. Correct. So you watched that? Do you enjoy it? Uh, amazing. Absolutely You've amazing. It? I've watched it too. It's actually yeah. mind blowing. Oh, okay. The yeah. fact they've got something to watch now. Yeah. They got them all out. Yeah. Which watch I'm not going to give service? any spoilers, but yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. Disney Plus. Uh, Disney Plus. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> underrated. It is. It is pretty, it's pretty underrated um, platform, Disney Plus. It there's is, a lot it of is. like weird stuff. But there's some good docu. It's got like Nat Geo and well, um, David Attenborough and stuff. Magic Johnson has one about like how that Orlando um, – Oh, not Magic Johnson. Sorry, um, Shaq. Oh, Shaq. How he, he went there. Yeah. And they. Your like, mate, Shaqy. Shaq. Shaq. Yeah. <laughs> established yep. Um, yep. Orlando, and he was the face of it. That that was pretty cool to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Two at the handles, probably my. Oh, what is that? so I good! That. Oh, it's just this sex-driven people go over. I <laughs> think they're gonna have these like <laughs> that is perfect. Is it, is it? <laughs> this pleasure time, and then um, there's this little thing that delete history. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's this this like little thing called Lana's little robot, and it's like puts them all in chastity belts, and then if they don't do it. They lose money. <laughs> it's freaking cool. Is this a, is it's this actually a, good. Like, is this like, a, like a real thing or is it a series? Of, like, is it yeah. like fiction or non? Like, no, no, no. It's, it's like Love Island. So it's a TV show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Season two, I'm on it. Yeah. Wow. And what's oh. it on? Uh, Netflix. Some, one Netflix. Of them, one of them. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> done. Yeah. Um, what what, have service? you got anything for us? Oh, I've got heaps. Uh, I. I'm banned from talking about Yellowstone because that was like something that I really enjoyed. Oh, I could never get into that. So some Sorry, people could I struggled a bit too. Um, yeah. The best series of all time, of all time, is Ozark. Mm. Sure. Oh, I've watched, I haven't watched the newest season. Okay. Have you seen uh, it? No, I haven't watched it. Talking about okay. wine country Yeah, wine here. country. <laughs> not really got, it hasn't really got anything to do with uh, Shrek. 50 year olds going to wine country. Um, but yeah, another one I love with was uh, Top Boy. About the no, 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 okay. haven't heard of it. And Sorry, you're educating us. Educating you. And the last one, the one that I've watched recently that I really liked was Have you seen Your Honor on Stan? No. It's about the judge and his son does a hit and run and they try and get him off the yeah. Anyway, no. that's another one. Girls, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It means a lot. I've learned a lot. Um, yeah, hopefully we can do it again. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Just Thanks for the coffee. Would you like to come in again? Deal. Yeah. I'm obsessed. I okay. love it. You're I'm coming back. In again. Absolutely. Yeah. Sign me out. Yeah. Are we back. allowed to with a new Fox Sports deal that yeah, I'm not going to get yeah. or anything? Fantastic. That's awesome. Thanks to the everyone else. Cheers, guys. Love it. And um, best of luck for the finals. Cheers. Thanks, Dean.